All right, today I want to talk about debugging after your first few months of writing code. So you've been writing JavaScript, and as you're writing your script, you're trying to fi figure out if functions are running, when the functions are running, what the value of certain variables are while your functions are running. And the typical thing that most people do when they're starting out with programming is they add console log statements. So whether it's console log or console.error, that's what you're sticking inside your script. Then you can open up the console and you can see, oh, hey, look, my function ran. So everything's good. I know that my function ran. Or if there was a variable that I wanted to know, I could come inside of here and say, okay, yeah, write out what the, vari the value of my variable x is. So if I do that, I can see, okay, yeah, x was null at this point. Okay, very normal. Everybody does that. But eventually you get to the point where you want to be able to do things a little bit more efficiently. Maybe the debugging that you want to do is, I need to know when this function was called and if it was called, where it was called from. Maybe I have a whole series of functions that are running and this last one in the chain could be called from four different places. So how do I know when it was called? Or maybe I've got a variable like x and it's changing inside of every function. Maybe inside of here, I'm going to set it to 4, 5, 6, and then down inside of here, x is going to become 7, 8, 9, but if it comes down to this function, then 1, 2, 3 is going to be the value. So we've got this variable that's changing all over the place, and I need to be able to track that, and based on its value, I'll know where in the code I am. So all these different scenarios. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Now, I'm just sitting here, I've got my debugger panel open, uh, the elements, the console, all these different wonderful tools that we've got. If I have this open, and in my code, if I come in here and I add the keyword debugger, just like this, and I save that, what's going to happen is when this code runs, so I'm listening for DOM content loaded, my web page is loaded, I'm going to call this function, it's going to write this message, I'm going to change the value of x, and then debugger, what this does is it creates a breakpoint in my code. Now a breakpoint is a point in your code where you want to pause. You want to stop the script running at that point so you can take a look and see what the value of certain variables are. And inside of here, you can see there's the debugger key line. This is the sources tab. Inside the sources tab, we have a panel over here where top, this is the main frame that holds everything. You'll see this on every single web page that you open. Then, okay, here's the domain. This is the HTML file. If you've got scripts coming from other domains or CSS from other domains, those will be listed here as well. Inside my JS folder, here's my JavaScript file, and here's the panel with it open. So I'm going to hide that navigator just so I can see more of the script. Now this is a breakpoint, and right here you can see I've got a, a pause play button. So I can resume the script running. Right up here it tells me, hey, everything is paused right now. Okay, that's great. So from my code in my script file I can write this word, and I'm, I've created a breakpoint. Another way you can do that is in this sources file, or panel rather, if you go to your file, you can click right here, and here, and here, and here. Every one of these is a breakpoint. So we are turning points on and off in our code to say, hey, you know what? When you get to this point in the script, can you pause? Because I want to take a look and see what the value of my variables are. Maybe it's something that's only going to take a couple of milliseconds, and I don't have time to sort of quickly look inside of here and look at a variable and find out what it's going to be at that point. But with the breakpoint on, what I can do is I can come in here and I can open up this scope. Inside of scope, I can see, hey, here's my local variables, here's variables in the script. The global, well, the global is the window object in the browser. So here's everything that's inside of there. So if you've done something inside the window object, you can find that. Uh, in my script, I have one global variable, x, and this is the value, 4, 5, 6, right here. Yep, it was changed to 4, 5, 6 at this point. Um, so local, there we go, this document, um, the keyword this at this point 
in this function, what it means is document. So if I was to write this dot something, I would be talking about the document. It was the document object that triggered my function right here to run. Now, opening up the scope and looking through here for all the variables, that's great, that works, but you're going to have files where you've got a lot of variables and you might not want to dig down through this to find them all. In cases like that, we have the watch panel. Now, I've added this previously, watch, I could come in here and delete this. These are watch expressions. So I could have one or more variables inside of here and say, you know what, I'd like to know what the value of the variable x is at this point. And now this is in the watch panel. So if I resume my script, okay, it's still currently at this point, 456 is the value of x. Now I have other places where I'm changing it. And we can see up here, I've got a listener for the error object in my script. So if any JavaScript error happens, this function messed up should run. I've got a bunch of variables inside there, and I'm changing the value of x to 789. Then I'm going to console log what that is. Okay, I'm going to set a breakpoint right here just to make sure it stops at this point. So all I have to do is click on the body. This line of code is going to run. So I'm calling some non-existent method. That's going to trigger an error, which is going to call my messed up function and run this bit of code. I've put a breakpoint in here. I didn't have to write the keyword debugger in here. I'm adding one myself inside the panel. So here we go. I'm clicking. There we go. We got to the breakpoint. It paused. Right here, we can see it's written what all of these things are. Here's the variable ERR. Here's the these variables right here, the values that are inside of each one of them. And my x, when I get down to this point, my code is right here. It's about to call this function. It hasn't run this line yet. There it is. This is the value now of that variable. I didn't have to add it again. It just, now it's in there. It's going to stay in the panel until I close the browser or close this tab anyway. So we have all these things showing up. We can use them. Console.error should have run now. If I jump over to console, sure enough, there it is. There is the console.error message being written out. So back into sources. Now, I can just resume this, but another thing that we can do, I'm going to expand this a little bit. Another we can, thing that we can do inside of here is step. Now, there's a few different options here, but this is the one that I use most often, just the regular step. You can use the F9 key to do it, or I can click on this button. If I click, what happened was this line ran which called this function, and now I'm at the beginning of this line. You can see x is still 789. If I step again, 1, 2, 3. We've changed it. We've run this line. Now we're at the beginning of this line of code, so we're about to end this function. After we end it, we should jump back up into here, and it should be the last line of this. If there was another line of code, it would have run. But this brings me to the next one, call stack. Inside of here, this gives you the call stack. This is the list of functions that were called that got me to this point. So what happened was I clicked here. I clicked on the body. That ran this anonymous function, and that's what this is. This anonymous function is running. Then an error happened. So an error happened here, which triggered this. So the line four debug messed up got called and we can see yeah messed up was called and then from inside there another funk this one was called and that is at the top of my stack that's where i am right now if i step again it's going to jump from here back up to this point so another funk will disappear from that stack now we're back into messed up i click again we're going to be back up here and we're going to be done with the current process there we go. We're done. We're back up to that anonymous function. Okay, so we have watch where we can put variables. The call stack that gives me sort of the list of everything that was run to get to the point that I'm at right now. Scope where we can look to see the values of different things. If it's not in the watch, it's going to be in the scope. 
it can be in both places, but this is the list of everything. Um, now, a few of the other things that we have in here, we have down at the bottom breakpoints. We can see here's the only breakpoint that I've created, but if I click somewhere else, okay, now I've got a couple of breakpoints inside of here. I can turn them on and off through here. I can turn them on and off through here. Um, another option that we have for breakpoints with errors, this one right here, this pause on exception, even if I don't have any errors inside of here, I'm going to jump back to my script for just one second. I'm going to comment this out, which will reload my page once I save it. Once I resume, okay, my debugger is commented out. It's not running. Now, my watch, this will be not available. I can click the refresh here. Okay, now it's tracking that. Good. The init function has run. It is 456. If I click here, I don't have any breakpoints. What this is going to do is it's just going to give me the error. So two lines, one of them, this is my console.error line that's writing all this. The other one is the actual error. So it's saying, hey, there was an error that took place in your script. I can come back into here and say, well, I know this function is running every time there's an error. I can actually prevent that. I can come in here and say prevent default, meaning don't let that error bubble up and be displayed. I'll write out the message about what it is that's going on right here. Now if I clear this out and load it again and we click. Oh, sorry, I have to change that in the script over here. So error.preventDefault. There we go, I've saved it. Page is reloaded. When I click to cause that error, there it is. The error didn't come up here because I put prevent default, but I'm still able to write out the error message with my code right here. Now, from the console, since you're used to working with that, over here, I'm sure you've looked and you've seen, okay, this is the page and this is the line number where the thing happened. You can actually click on this and it will take you to that line inside of sources. So that's another way that we can get over to the sources other than writing debugger or manually looking for the sources tab. So we've got breakpoints, um, XHR fetch, uh, this is XML HTTP request fetch breakpoints, uh, DOM breakpoints, uh, nothing set up in there. Global listeners, I have two right here. So on the global object, the window object in this case, Error and Steve, those are the two events that I'm listening for. And we can see here's what we have. This is the object that we're listening on that. And here's the handler. So this one's calling another funk. This one's calling messed up. So global listeners tell us anything that's on the window object and event listeners. If you want to listen for events that you have in your code, like I have here a click listener on the body, I can come down here. I can say, you know what, any mouse event or open that up and say any click event that happens anywhere inside my page, I want to be notified. So a click. There we go. Paused on event listener, body.click. So this tells me, hey, this is what just happened. The click event that you were listening for, it happened. And that created effectively a breakpoint for me. So it paused. I can check out the variables, look at the watch, look at the scope, figure out what the value of my variables are, and then resume or just start stepping from that point going through all these variables. Okay, so that should give you lots of information um, that you can use to start improving your debugging, start being a little bit more effective, a little bit more professional with your error debugging beyond just putting stuff in the console. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. There's still a lot of stuff that I didn't talk about yet, but that's enough to really get you going. So if you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.